um, and to present some things and some clarifications, uh, you know, to folks and to things that are being said about me. Um, you know, I've tried very hard to take the high road all along the way here, and it has not been easy. Um, you know, any of us in this particular field catch a lot of crap. Yeah. And, you know, some of it comes in, a, in, a, in, in buckets, some of it comes in truckloads, and then sometimes they just take a 787 and drop it on you. Um, many of the people around me, my closest friends, um, have said, you know, take the high road, take the high road. Well, I have, and it just it gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm going to continue to take the high road, but um, I'm no longer going to shut up. Yeah. Uh, I'm done with that. So before we get into any of that, and I address my critics and their past, um, I want to give you some new information that I was given three and a half weeks ago. Okay. In a telepathic contact with Mornay, um, I will tell, I will share with you what I can share with you. <laughs> okay. With the folks. As you are aware, there is a lot of information coming out from many different sources about the arrest of many uh, criminal bankers, uh, people of high position that are resigning left and right many are in the banking industry and we are being told that this is a really positive thing which it is that um that the white hats the good guys are finally winning and uh the bad guys are backing up okay i myself have had this um belief system and have believed that they were in fact backing up that, that, and they are mm -hmm. things have been going on off world as well as, you know, on planet, um, as evidence of this. Mm -hmm. However, I was, I was told by Mornay three and a half weeks ago that the core group of this, of, of the dark side, we call it many names, the Illuminati, the powers that be, the royal families, the royal bloodline, the reptilians, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to call them, whatever label we have for them, they are not done. They are not over yet. This war is nowhere near being completed. Okay. Okay, and what he told me was that what we see on the surface, it, they are fainting at. They are thinking that they're really, really wounded. And what they're doing is they are eliminating three levels of corporate management of the world. That They are eliminating it because it's weak. They cannot depend on it. What they are basically doing is getting rid of their own rats, so that when they implement a one-world government and a global currency, these guys will not be a part of the management team. Whoa. That's who we see getting arrested. But this is not over. Not at all. Yeah. And a lot of things are going on. There is literally a war going on around the Earth and in the Earth. And what I mean by that is in the oceans, etc. Much of the information we're getting um, is is accurate, but it's not the whole story. Okay. Mm, okay. Um, now, to add to that, he also said that a series of things, actions, would be occurring between now and the middle of July of this year. Okay. And these events are designed to empower humanity. Well, okay. Yeah. Now the reason for this, I said, well, what are they? He said, I can't share that with you yet because they're still being developed. Okay. But the purpose of developing these actions to empower us, because you remember, they've said this all along, whatever actions they have to take, they have to empower us because we ultimately have to take responsibility for ourselves. Yeah, I don't know. Because babysitting never works. Mm -hmm. He said that the purpose for this is that when we finally meet them, meaning extraterrestrials, we will not worship them. Okay. Because we can't. We cannot worship them. That will only make things worse. Mm -hmm. And it will be a huge setback. The point of the matter is, when this finally comes down, when, we, when all the events come down related to the Book of Revelations, mm -hmm. 
and we are going to have to play it out because it's been placed into the consciousness of humanity for 1,500 years. Mm. Okay, we're going to have to play it out, and we're going to play it out. <sighs> Things are going to occur. Now, that will play this thing out. And the lesson at the end of all of this to humanity is we are creators. We create physicality with our thoughts and with our emotions. That's how powerful we are, and that's why they have been manipulating us, these regressive groups, for so long. They have been hiding within our physicality, within our creation of our physicality. They have been hiding within it, and they have been manipulating us for thousands and thousands of years so that they would have a place to hide. Yes. Well, all of this is coming to fruition, and as our energy frequency is, increases, as we approach the galactic plane, and we enter the, the plasma cloud, our, the vibration is rising so that the dimensional field in which they've been hiding is becoming exposed. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to hide anymore. But we need to know clearly the reality of the fact that we've been hiding them without our knowledge. Okay? We have been hiding them. They have been hiding behind us without us knowing it. And we need to know why and we need to know how. Because we are creators. Physical, okay. we create physicality. Now, I know this is not new to many people, but just how deep this rabbit hole goes is going to be shocking because it's coming out. It's, it's, begin, it's, it's being exposed very, very quickly. Yeah. So, yesterday, on a um, website called All American Gold, a friend of mine said, you need to listen to these three interviews. Now, you can find these on YouTube. Okay. And what you'd want to do is you want to look up Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, Quayle, I believe it's Q-U-A-Y-L-E, February 22nd, 2012, with Tom, T-O-M, Horn, H-O-R-N. Okay. And this is a three and a half, almost four hour interview. Whoa. Regarding what's happening on a spiritual level pretty much focused just around the Catholic Church. Yeah. Carlos, I was born and raised Catholic. Yeah. Um, you know, I've researched this for a long, long time, have even was given information from my dad as a kid uh, about a book called The Vatican Empire, about how they owned, how they were really just a corporation, mass as a church. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also shared on the radio shows that we did with Robert Stanley, which are now gone, about the three trusts that the Catholic Church had set up, basically declaring themselves the owner of the earth, the owner of us, and the owner of our souls. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, get ready. The inf now, I've been exposed to a lot of information, but folks, okay. this information, these, are, these interviews blew me away about what's going on on a spiritual level, not only with the church, but with humanity and how the fulfillment of the cre of literally the book of Revelations is being played out. You have to, you must, this is your homework, listen to these four hours. Okay, yeah. Okay. we will. It gives you another piece of the puzzle, and it's clear, it is clear that we're going to have to play this out. But what you want to do is you want to know who all the characters are, who's the cast, Who's playing their roles? Okay? Um, and it's shocking. It is absolutely shocking, the information that's going on. Um, I don't know how the Vatican is going to be dealt with. It might be that this thing needs to be played out because it's clear, and, and you know, Bob Stanley talked about this with the Archons. Mm -hmm. It is clear that there's just not a physical war going on within our dimension, but a multi-dimensional war going on. And they are not only coming in and out of our physicality, but they are also possessing human beings. Well. And, you know, to whoever listens to this, especially Catholics and Christians, I'm telling you, prepare yourself. 
for the information that's on this four-hour interview. Oh. Um, could you, could it's you, shocking. Could, could Absolutely you? shocking. So, having said that, having given you, bringing you up to date with new information about what's going on, and again, I don't know the series of events that are going on, he also said, Mornay, and this interview that I listened to yesterday also touched on it, touched on the potential for it. Mornay also said that what's going to happen is that when this thing goes down, that the world government, after creating the world government in a, in a single currency, that they were going to introduce us to the demigods. Now, the demigods are the ones who are part us and part not us. Now, what am I talking about? If you go back to Greek mythology and Roman mythology, there were the gods, mm -hmm. who we now know as the Anunnaki, uh, the Pleiadians, uh, probably the Plejarans. They left half-breeds here. They, they had children with Earth women. Well. But because they weren't full-blooded, they were left here. And many were left with technology. They were left in places of power. They were told to control, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Many of them look like us, yeah. but they're not really us. They are going, we are going to be introduced to the demigods. They are going to declare themselves our rulers. They're going to declare themselves our creators. All this stuff, we need to know who they are. And the whole purpose of these events that are coming up between now and July, and I hate giving dates because so many of them don't happen. And but you know everything today is event based. I don't think they're they're set on dates. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about events that occur. But anyway, that's what he said. So I'm putting it out there. And the purpose of empowering us is so that we will not worship these beings. Okay. They don't deserve our worship. Okay. We have the same capabilities, the same potentialities as they do. All right? Yeah. We just don't believe it because we've been so suppressed with religions and told we're sinners, we're bad, we're this, we're that, we're losers, you know? And then they have us warring and fighting with each other. And then they've created religions so that we would continuously go to war with each other and hate each other. I mean, it's just been amazing. Yeah. to be able to step out of this and to see how deep it goes. Well, it's all coming to the surface, and apparently this is the year. This is the year for this all to happen. So, so what, you, what you're telling to me is that the, they are going to set up the the new world order? The new, I mean... Yes, Warren Ace said that it would, it would be around for at least eight months. Whoa. Okay? Does it's it, coming. It is coming. Does it have to be with, yeah. the, with the... Sorry, the... Does it have a relation with the, with the iron uh, with the with the um, iron thread that they are trying to spread on the on the news and, and that on that crap? Apparently, this is all being manipulated. Okay, we are being led down a path. Mm -hmm. Right, we are being led down a path, um, and unfortunately, the U.S. is right in the middle of it. Yeah. Okay, there may be white hats, but they're not running the show yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now. Mornay also said that with the elimination of these three levels of global management, that the whole idea here was to bring out and to flush out the good guys so that they knew exactly who they were and where they are. Yeah. So that when they implement this world government, they would know who the good guys are. So they need to know that, that, that this that they're totally in weakness, they're fainting it. That's the word he used, they are fainting a weakness. In other words, at some point, at the very highest levels, they are still very, very much in control. Okay, so... What the and, and I that I wanted to share that with everyone who will even listen to this message. Okay. So what, what they are doing is just like a kind of a uh, serpent that it, when it's uh, going to be dead or, very, or it's going to be eaten by that by, by his predator it it's it uh, it appears it's that playing dead. It, it's playing dead yeah uh, it, it, yep, it's playing dead so th there, you know there are a lot of people that are thinking that the 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 world government is just uh, it's just done that the that the ETs are all of that 
um, beings that are coming to the air, they are they are now in control. But you are telling me now that that's not true, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Now that's not to say that you know the information that's being shared is is, is misleading. I believe that you know the people talking about this, uh, Fulford and Wilcock, they're absolutely sincere in the information they have. They're yeah. absolutely sincere in how deep it goes and you know the derivatives and creating um, fraudulent bonds in order to take control of the world's wealth. They're sincere about that. They absolutely are. Um, you know, and, and I want to believe them. I do. I, I don't want this to play out. I don't want this to go to the next level of, of oh my God, you know, here's the false prophet, here's the antichrist, here's these satanic dark spirits coming to earth. I don't want this to happen. Yeah. But, but what Moran has said is this is going to play itself out and maybe it has to so that all these guys, all these troublemakers can be rounded up all at once. Maybe that's what Earth is about. We were baked. We were, we were here. We were like a, a, an anything go zone so that these guys could come in and we would be able to catch them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but there's a reason why the Patal are here, incarnated as human beings. Maybe we're the bait. I don't know. Um, I suspect that that's true, but there's a much bigger agenda, and it could be that this negativity is going to be captured and rounded up once and for all here so that it is no longer a menace to our galaxy. Okay. That's what I suspect. Ooh, so, so there are a lot of things that are going to be happening on this um, next five months, right? Uh, yeah, well, between now and the end of the year, I guess. Um, but you know, the guys on the um, on the broadcast, the interview that I shared with you on YouTube, Steve Quayle and Tom Horn, they're of the perspective that this is going to go to to 2016. That's their perspective. I don't know. I hope not. Oh. Um, but, you, you know, the point is, we have to gather the information, and then we have to intuitively go within, connect to God, ourselves, spirit, okay, and, and figure out what feels right. You know, we all have to do that. Yeah. And again, I want to say to everyone, regardless of your philosophical or religious beliefs, you absolutely have a connection to God yourself. You do. Whatever name you give that, whatever you call it, you have a connection to God yourself. And it is more th important than ever to totally correct to that source. Now, <laughs> now, it is, uh, yeah, you, you just, you have to. I mean, I have to try to get guidance because, you know, oh, I so don't ever want to walk this path again. Yes. Yeah. Um, You know, I've, I've, I've taken a lot, it, and, it's, and it's hurt. I've been really, really hurt and wounded with betrayal. This lifetime of betrayal has been, in loss, has been a huge part of my journey this lifetime. And I don't want to do this again. Um, so, having get in, gotten into that and shared the new information, um, you know, let's talk about the ac accusations. Um, you know, back in the day when I worked for the Internal Revenue Service, I was a tax collector, a revenue officer. That's what I was supposed to do to collect taxes. I shut down businesses. I threw people out of work. It's a very, very tough job because, number one, you're always dealing with a negative, and there's just no question you're creating a lot of karma. Okay? It sucked, quite frankly. Yeah. And you don't have many friends outside of the service because, you know, who, who wants to hang out with an IRS agent? Okay? Um, nobody. And uh, so there was a time where I decided um, that I wanted to help defend people from IRS. Mm -hmm. um, my dad had a situation back in upstate New York with Internal Revenue. And my dad is a, was a, he's deceased now. He died in 98. He's a really good man. You know, but like all of us, he had his stuff to work on as well. But he was a really good man and he worked really, really hard. He had a huge family to support a lot of children and he was doing the very best he could 
and he got into some trouble with IRS, and right off the bat, they treated him like a criminal. And I got really pissed off. So a lot of that had to do with how they treated my dad. So I went to the other side of the table. Okay. Now, I want you to be aware of the fact that this is back in 1985. Mm-hmm. I was the first revenue officer, tax collector, to literally go to the other side of the fence and help represent people in front of IRS collections in Los Angeles. Okay? I was the first one to do it. Yes. And I was a tax collection consultant. And what I did was I went door to door to the law firms, CPA firms, uh, tax accounting firms, uh, PA firms to offer consulting how to deal with IRS collections. Because you can't go to school for that. The only guys who know really how to do it are revenue officers because they're the ones given the training. So what I did was um, I started doing lectures, yeah. teaching law firms, accounting firms, how IRS collections does it. Mm-hmm. Well, they hated me. IRS, the uh, LA district, the senior management of IRS district in Los Angeles hated me for doing this because I was pulling back the veil. I was showing people, here's how you can defend yourself. Here's how they gather information. Here's how they find it. Um, here's what a revenue officer's caseload looks like. Here's what he does. Here's how he gets your attention, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they did not like me. Mm. So, um, you know, I was exposing the fear tactics and the mind control that they use. You know, you notice how between um, February and April 15th, you hear about all these big names getting busted and getting arrested. You know, they do that on purpose to scare the crap out of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the actual legality of IRS, the tax law, other than to say it was not properly ratified in the House of Representatives. It was not. Mm-hmm. But that's for somebody else to deal with. I hit a lot of brick brick walls, you know, standing up for the underdog. So, um, to address the current accusations against me, I had many, many clients at the time. Uh, at the time that I got into trouble with IRS, I had at least 10 or 11 um, things going on with clients. Yeah. None of them positive, by the way. And I was, usually when I was brought in, it's when all else failed and they were seizing or they had seized they were uh, leveling bank accounts, they were entering 401s, they were taking IRAs, uh, retirement things. Unfortunately, that's just how it worked. I was brought in, but basically it was almost too late. Yeah. Okay, uh, many companies I got into trouble, it was because of poor management or just bad decisions, or they were hoping things were gonna turn around, they were gonna get loans on property, etc. And it just, it took too long or it just didn't work. Um, I had a client, who had a family, great family, and he had just gone through a, an IRS um, audit or a seizure several months before. Yes. Now, the Internal Revenue Service uses the Internal Revenue Manual, which is very hard to get and very expensive. And most people don't even have any idea how to even read it. But in the Internal Revenue Manual that the IRS uses, they have what is called a 23C date. A 23C date then, this is back in the 80s, once an audit was completed, the service had 120 days in which to assess the tax, make it legal, before they could do anything. IRS commonly, or I'm going to say at least 30% of the time, would miss the 23C date. And there were a lot of reasons for that, because case loads were so big, paperwork would get lost, and the computer system they were using at the time, IDRS, was a disaster. Um... It just didn't function properly. Things got lost. Things weren't tracked, etc. But nonetheless, if they blew a 23C date based on the Internal Revenue Manual, now I'm not talking tax code, okay? I'm talking Internal Revenue Manual, what they use themselves. Um, the tax was supposed to be uncollectible, but they often would go out and collect it anyway. And this is one of those cases where they were trying to collect the money anyway even though they were breaking their own law, okay? So, I, I found out from a friend of mine who had access to IDRS that they had, in fact, blown the statute. Yeah. And I was given this information 
predicated on, I would never rat him out. And I did not. I kept my word. I protected the source. And I called the IRS on the 23C date. That was my mistake. I should have had my client hire a tax attorney who had worked for IRS, and we should have done a discovery. Uh, but his life at that point was completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't see his family. Everything was gone. They had just taken control of every single dime he had and shut and seized his business. Putting uh, 31, I think it was, 31 or 32 people out of work just days before. So I called him on it, and that changed everything. Okay, they wanted to know how I knew the 23C date had been uh, breached. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't tell them. And when I finally was arrested by CID agents for the Internal Revenue Service, uh, I refused again to tell them. Uh, I was arrested in a hallway of an apartment building. Um, and when they put me in the car, that's all they wanted to know. Who was it that told me that? If I would tell them who that was, all of this would go away. And I kept bringing up the fact, listen guys, you know, what about the fact that you're collecting this tax illegally? Well, that just got them angrier and angrier at me. Um, so I ended up going to jail. I went to tax court. I was put in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Los Angeles, where I remained for 92 days before I was released. Okay. Um, in Los Angeles. And when I got to my floor, several people had already known that I was an ex-IRS agent. And five times I had people try to kick my ass. Now that was nice of the IRS to do that. Several times when they would come to get me to take me to court, they would ask me again, if you tell us who it was that breached IDRS, all this will go away. But I wasn't gonna do that because again, they were in the wrong. I wasn't, they were in the wrong. So I get to tax court and I have four or five charges leveled at me, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and they were all bullshit. They were all bullshit charges. In fact, in the end, three of them were completely dismissed by the judge. I had, I was given a public defender because everything I had had been seized as well by the IRS. I had no documents, no records, no checkbook. I had nothing but the clothes on my back. So I go to court and the first attorney I'm given has never, ever had a tax case. So I request a new attorney, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I have got, I am, knee, I am waist deep in alligators and I have a 3,000 pound gorilla pounding me on the head and they give me a public defender that never had dealt with a tax case. So I ask for a second one. I get a second attorney that's defended, a uh, tax court judge gives me another attorney. He has no tax court experience either. <laughs> Shit. Okay? Yeah. So I request again a judge specifically asking for a public defender that has some tax court experience. Mm -hmm. He gives me a third attorney, public defender, who had less total all overall experience than the other two, but again, no tax court experience whatsoever. He had been a public defender for less than three years. And the judge told me, this is it. You're not getting another one. So I'm like, okay, I'm really screwed here. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was totally screwed. Um, but you know, if I had to do the whole thing over again, the only thing I would change is that I would have my a client get a tax attorney. Now, meanwhile, I'm in jail and all my other cases are completely falling apart. Mm -hmm. And my clients are doing whatever they have to do to protect themselves from this 3000 pound gorilla because I'm not there to defend them anymore. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, I ended up pleading guilty to so the least of the three of the four charges or five charges, whatever it was, um, uh, to making a false material statement to a government agency. And I, and then I would be released. Well, the situation in MDC was so bad for me that I did. I took the plea thinking that someday down the road I could get an attorney and I could revisit this and I would be able to have it overturned. Okay. Well, that just never really happened. Um, financially, there's, it's been a struggle. There have been 
a lot of years of struggle, and I've never been able to deal with it um, or get it overturned or revisit it with a really good law firm. Hopefully one day that'll change. So yes, I do in fact have a felony count against me from the IRS. Mm -hmm. But now you know the situation. And my detractors or my critics are using that so that people will completely dismiss all the information that the Andromedans have passed on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make you believe me. I can't make you not believe me. But what I have told you on the life of my children is true. And that's all I can do. If you decide to throw away all the information, then so be it. That's on you. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I have not done this for profit. I have not done this for glory. Oh, my God. I mean, what glory? You have no idea how difficult it's been to lose the friends that I've had, to lose the partners that I've had, to have my children think I'm, in, I'm insane, to have to deal with betrayal. I, you just have no idea. And it, it is something I would never, ever do again. So, you know, you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Um, when I, I will just share this with you. When I got out, the next time I had a contact from Warren A. to say this, I brought up to them, do you still want to talk to me? Because a conviction like this is a, scar is a scarlet letter. It's clearly a mark. It's something that I'm ashamed of. But nonetheless, it's there. And their, their attitude was, they knew my change of thoughts. They knew my heart was in the right place. And yes, they still wanted to talk to me. And Morinay even commented that it's absolutely insane to build the hopes of a civilization on a system of currency that is not only real, but is ultimately controlled by a few. And that was it. They dropped it after that. Yeah. Um, and I literally have been trying to outrun it all my life. But obviously I can't, so there it is, it's out there. Is that the real reason why I changed my name? No, it is not. I have already dealt with that two and a half years ago. At the time I started speaking, you know, there was no internet. And my dad was really worried about it coming back to the family. And I've been as clear as I can be about that, and I have nothing to add to that. You take it or leave it, whatever you want to do. You know, you just go for it. Now to address my critics. Uh, there's one in particular who is a representative for another group. He is not a contactee himself, though it appears that it's all about him. <laughs> yeah. um, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you research um, Mr. Horn's ex-wife? Why don't you look for her? Why don't you find out what happened to her? Um, that should be very telling for the type of character you're dealing with. Uh, there's also a, a, a woman going around stating that she's my ex-wife. She's a liar. She is not my ex-wife. She claims to be a Catholic. She practices black magic. She does pentagrams. She puts spells on people. She puts on this persona that she's just wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, no. Don't go there. And then there's the other person. Um, we all have a past. Yeah. You know, we all have a past. And um, he has a past, a drug bust, and I'll just let you figure out who that is. But does that make them all horrible people? No, it does not. Uh, you know, what drama? I mean, it is all such drama. And it all takes away from what's really important, and that is the liberation of humanity not only physically, but spiritually and mentally. Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we need to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. Every day we need to be focusing on what can I do to not only free myself from the dogma, from this prison, okay, but spiritually, what can I do every day to free myself and help free humanity? That is the focus. That has to be the focus of everything we do every single day from this point on. If you want to discard everything I've said, you're free to do that. You will anyway, or you won't. But we have to be focusing on that. 
the other thing that I want to share is something that Dan Fogelberg wrote a song about. And in talking about it, he talked about, and this is obviously before he passed away, yeah. he talked about something that he had read in a book from Still Life with Woodpecker by Tom Robbins. Mm-hmm. And in it, a discussion came up in this book. Dan Fogelberg, the songwriter, wrote about this. Is the most important question humanity can ask itself. And it's this. How do we make love stay? How do we make love stay with ourselves? In other words, how do we self-empower ourselves with love and make it stay? Make it permanent. Okay? And what I mean by that is not by into what everybody else tells us about us, because that's really their own crap. Okay? How do we make it stay within ourselves? How do we then project that and be an example of that to our family of making love stay every day? How do we then, within our family, project that to our community? How do we make love stay within our community? In other words, how do we stand together, united? Ladies and gentlemen, that is where we really need to be. Yeah. You know, we need to focus on that every single day, and it can only start with us individually. And that's why I say strengthen that connection to Source, to God, to Allah, to Christ, whatever name you want to use. That is where we have to start. And we need to do that because when you listen, when you see what's going on in the world, um, you know that we're only getting maybe 20% of what's really happening from the major media. When you listen to this interview about what's going on um, in Rome, you will have a profound sense that it is time. This is happening. It's not in the distant future. It is literally happening as we speak, the playing out of revelations. And ladies and gentlemen, we got to get our heads right. We really do. And, you know... Whatever you think of me after you've listened to this interview, I want you to know that I have done this from my highest place with the most honest and honorable of intentions um, because I love you, because I care. You know, I'm a parent, and I care. And I don't know what else I can do at this point. Uh, I have regrets. If I could go back in time, there are things I would do different, but I can't. This is the hand I have to play, and this is what it is. And I don't know if I'll be doing any more interviews after today. I have another one this afternoon. I don't know that there'll be any more. There may not. But, you know, I wanted to set the record straight. You know, I am not Darth Collier, the Sith Lord, though I am... I am being portrayed as such. Everybody needs to be looking at their own shit. And they need to be dealing with their own shit. Before they start pointing the finger at everybody else. Because that's what's coming up. Everybody's crap is coming up to be dealt with. And it's going to have to be dealt with. Okay? Um, That's just what it is. So, Carlos, I don't know that I have anything left to say. Okay, <clears throat> I think that it's very clear that you that you told. Um, so I understand that uh, after this interview, you are you won't take another interview, right? I don't know. I'm I'm just so tired. I know. I'm so tired, and our my living situation is dire. You know, um, there's no food for there's no money for food. I don't know what's going to happen to me after this. Um, Mr. Stanley's remarks that everything's fine. It was, it's a lie, but he did that to hurt me. Um, but he, he didn't just hurt me. There are others that are now being hurt. Yeah, no, but, you know, whatever. That's what it is. Um, you know, it's dire. Uh, and if you can help, I would love it. I, I can't even tell you how much I'd appreciate it. But if you can't, because you already have, I understand that too. You know, I'm having to rely on some faith here as well. Um, But Carlos, I don't know. Um, 
the phones will be off any time now. You know, the phone will be off any time now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, you know, I don't know if I get any more telepathic information and I can get to a library, um, I will forward it to you. Sure. Okay, with any updates that I get. I'm sure I will be getting them because this is an incredibly, incredibly um, important, critical time for humanity as all of this plays out. You know, it really is to have some clarity. <laughs> so that's all I can offer at the, at, at the moment. Okay, sure. I understand now, sir. Um, just, uh, I want to go back over some things that you told before. The, could you repeat, please, the interview, the name of the people in the interview that you said uh, about the Vatican information? Yes, it is. Um, it would be Steve Quayle, February 22nd, 2012, with Tom Horn, H-O-R-N. Okay. Good. And there's another gentleman on the interview as well, um, but it is three and a half to four hours long. It's in three parts. I got it from allamericangold.com yesterday, and it's at the very bottom of the webpage, and I was guided to it from a friend, and I was just like, oh my God. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm used to dealing with a lot of intel, and amazingly out of this world, out-of-the-box information. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Catholic, if you're a Christian, if you're a Jew, if you're a uh, Muslim, prepare yourself for this information because this is really happening. Okay. And it's not, it's dark, dark, dark. It's horribly dark what's about to happen. Okay? But you have to know. You have to know what's coming down so that you can create, we can all create something different. Yeah, sure. That's the point. Okay, we, 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 have we have to. And we can't. We can't. They've been hiding behind us. And now we can't let them do this anymore. Yeah, sure. So, next thing, what else, Carlos? Next thing that I go, I want to go back over is the... About the... You, you tell you tell something about demigods. Um, you said that... Uh, well, that I understood is... The shell government will uh, present the demigods to us, right? That is correct. Okay. Those demigods are uh, are those um, are the ones uh, that ha are known by uh, as the Anunnaki and all other beings um, that came before um, to the earth. They're they're part of the group that's been here all along, controlling behind the scenes. Okay, so they they create this global government <laughs> and this one world currency. They will step forward because they will then have absolute control. So they think that they will have absolute absolute control of humanity. Sure. Then so. And, and, and the whole purpose, if I understand more and correctly, of the events that are going to occur is to empower us so that we will not worship these beings when they appear. Yeah, no. Okay, when they appear and declare themselves as God, etc., etc., etc. Do you have any clue about what uh, what is the what what will be the things that uh, they are going to do to empower humanity? No, I, I, at the moment I don't. Okay, but um... I asked, but it was not shared with me. Okay, and I, you told um, you also told about some um, very dark beings coming to the air. Does it has to be anything with the with some ships that there some people are telling there that are closing to the air? They're they're here. Um, more, I, my understanding is uh, they're multi-dimensional. Okay. They're multi-dimensional. Okay. Um, sure. And the, the the last thing that, that I want to that I want to ask you is um, um, I know that you have to said this before, uh, but what happened? I, I I mean, do you know what what the hell happened with Rob Stanley? Did you, he just uh, delete everything on his website from that has to be from you? I mean, no, I don't. I don't. Um. I don't. Bob, Bob made a decision, and he just went with it. Um, and I have nothing more to say on that. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, I have nothing more to say on that. Okay. Sure. That's fine. And um, you know, um, and, I, and, and I will just say this: that the books that he's written, the, the contribution he's made is very, very important. Very, very important. Um, 
And when you listen to the article, when you listen to the interview regarding Rome and how it also connects to Washington, D.C., that's where Bob's pieces come in. And, it, and it's critical that that not be discounted for any reason. It's critical, that piece of information that he shared, um, he'll, he'll, he'll put the pieces together. I'm okay. sure that, that the listeners will put those pieces together. Okay, and I, I remember the interview that you are telling me. I mean, you, you said something about the three trusts and Vatican, and you, <clears throat> and you named some you named some people but I cannot uh, remember the name of the people that you said because you, you said that there were a, a video on, on YouTube uh, of somebody telling about these th three trusts about on the Vatican um, I don't have that information because I am not near the internet per se um, and I am not in the house talking to you at the moment okay sure okay um, so what I would suggest you do, Carlos, is there are those people who have that information because they sent it to Bob. What you can do is just ask the listeners who hear this to forward that information to you. Give them your website. Um, and I'm sure they'll send it to you so that you can have it and continue to push it forward because that is critical information. Um, it's amazing how how manipulated we've been and kept in the dark. It's staggering. Yeah, But yeah. why don't you just do that? And I'm sure someone will forward that information to you. I'm not in a position to do it. Okay. That's right. Okay. So, uh, why don't you just do it now since we're on it? So, okay. That, that's, that's fine, sir. Um, whew, I, I think that the, there, there, there are going to be a lot of people um, very surprised by the information that you shared this time. And I think that the next five months will be very, very, very tough. But... Uh, We have a lot of homework to do, and I hope that everything's going to be fine. I really, I really want you to be fine also because you, I know that you are a, a family man. So uh, I, I will do anything on my uh, that I can possibly do. Thank you, Carlos. You're a good man. You're a really, really good man. And there are a lot of really, really good men and women. And you know, we we've all been brought to this place where we're really, really tired and stressed out because of world events and the economy. This was all done by design to weaken us so that we would surrender to this power. We cannot give up. We cannot ever, ever, ever surrender our sovereignty as individual souls um, or as a, as a race to a group of demigods that are so dark. We just can't do it. And I promise you, whether I have one supporter or no supporters, I will never, ever surrender my sovereignty to these bastards. I will never do it. Yeah, I know that. Oh. <laughs> I know, I, I sure, I really, I'm really sure about that. You won't. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, right. uh, That's and, the way to go. and I think that there will be a lot of people that are going not to surrender the, uh, to them because we, uh, at least I, I can't talk about myself that I, I know who I am and I don't want to give my power to anyone else. There you go. There you go. Um, Carlos, after you've listened to the interview um, with Steve Quayle and Tom Horn, I would love to have your feedback. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, please, people, listen to it. Please, please listen to it. It's critical. I would not point you in that direction unless I thought it was absolutely critical and mandatory so that you could have that piece of the puzzle. I mean, we're being so distracted by what's going on in the physical world with the governments and Iran and all of that that we're not paying attention to the spiritual piece, and this is huge. This is huge. This is the spiritual piece of what's going on behind the scenes, and you absolutely have to know. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, uh, Carlos, if you could turn off the recorder, we can finish up just you and me, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, I will stop the, the recording right now, so give me a second, please. Sure. in the House of Representatives. It was not. Mm -hmm. But that's for somebody else to deal with. I had a lot of brick, brick walls, you know, standing up for the underdog. So, um, to address the current accusations against me, I had many, many clients at the time. Uh, at the time that I got into trouble with IRS, 
I had at least 10 or 11 um, things going on with clients. Yeah. None of them positive, by the way. And I was, usually when I was brought in, it's when all else failed and they were seizing or they had seized. They were uh, leveling bank accounts. They were entering 401s. They were taking IRAs, uh, retirement things. Unfortunately, that's just how it worked. I was brought in when basically it was almost too late. Yeah. Okay, uh, many companies that got into trouble, it was because of poor management or just bad decisions or they were hoping things were gonna turn around, they were gonna get loans on property, etc. And it just, it took too long or it just didn't work. Um, I had a client who had a family, great family, and he had just gone through a, an IRS um, audit or a seizure several months before. Yeah. Now the Internal Revenue Service uses the Internal Revenue Manual, which is very hard to get and very expensive. And most people don't even have any idea how to even read. Several times when they would come to get me to take me to court, they would ask me again, if you tell us who it was that breached IDRS, all this will go away. But I wasn't gonna do that because again, they were in the wrong. I wasn't, they were in the wrong. So I get to tax court and I have four or five charges leveled at me, mm. okay? Um, and they were all bullshit. They were all bullshit charges. In fact, in the end, three of them were completely dismissed by the judge. I had, I was given a public defender because everything I had had been seized as well by the IRS. I had no documents, no records, no checkbook. I had nothing but the clothes on my back. So I go to court and the first attorney I'm given has never, ever had a tax case. So I request a new attorney. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I have got, I am, knee, I am waist deep in alligators and I have a 3,000 pound gorilla pounding me on the head and they give me a public defender that never had dealt with a tax case. So I asked for a second one. I get a second attorney that's defended, a uh, tax court judge gives me another attorney. He has no tax court experience either. <laughs> Shit. Okay? Yeah. So I request again a judge specifically asking for a public defender that has some tax court experience. Uh, with the with that um iron thread that they are trying to spread on the on the news and, and that on that crap. Apparently this is all being manipulated. Okay. We are being let down a path. Mm -hmm. Right. We are being let down a path. Um and unfortunately the US is right in the middle of it. Yeah. Okay. There may be white hats, but they're not running the show yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now Mornay also said that with the elimination of these three levels of global management, that the whole idea here was to bring out and to flush out the good guys so that they knew exactly who they were and where they are. Yeah. So that when they implement this world government they would know who the big guys are. So they need to know that, 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 this, that they're totally in weakness, they're fainting it. That's the word he used, they are fainting a weakness. In other words, at some point, at the very highest levels, they are still very, very much in control. Okay, so what the... And, and, I, and I wanted to share that with everyone who will even listen to this message. Okay. So what what they are doing is just like a kind of a serpent that it, when it's going to be dead or very, or it's going to be eaten by that by, by his predator, it it's it uh, it appears it's that like that. going around stating that she's my ex-wife, she's a liar, she is not my ex-wife. She claims to be a Catholic. She practices black magic. She does pentagrams. She puts spells on people. She puts on this persona that she's just wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, no. Don't go there. And then there's the other person. Um, we all have a past. Yeah. You know, we all have a past. And um, he has a past, a drug bust, and I'll just let you figure out who that is. But does that make them all horrible people? No, it does not. Uh, you know, what drama? I mean, it is all such drama. And it all takes away from 
what's really important, and that is the liberation of humanity. Not only physically, but spiritually and mentally. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we need to be focusing on. Mm-hmm. Every day we need to be focusing on what can I do to not only free myself from the dogma, from this prison, okay, but spiritually, what can I do every day to free myself and help free humanity? That is the focus. That has to be the focus of everything we do every single day from this point on, between now and the middle of July of this year. Okay. And these events are designed to empower humanity. Whoa. Okay? Yeah. Now, the reason for this, I said, well, what are they? He said, I can't share that with you yet because they're still being developed. Okay. But the purpose of developing these actions to empower us, because you remember, they've said this all along, whatever actions they have to take, they have to empower us, because we ultimately have to take responsibility for ourselves. Yeah, I don't know. Because babysitting never works. Mm-hmm. He said that the purpose for this is that when we finally meet them, meaning extraterrestrials, we will not worship them. Okay. Because we can't. We cannot worship them. That will only make things worse. Mm -hmm. And it will be a huge setback. The point of the matter is, when this finally comes down, when when all the events come down related to the Book of Revelations, Mm -hmm. and we are going to have to play it out because it's been placed into the consciousness of humanity for 1,500 years. Mm Okay, we're going to have to play it out, and we're going to play it out. <sighs> Things are going to occur. Now, that will play this thing out. And the lesson at the end of all of this, to you mass sign, to weaken us so that we would surrender to this power. We cannot give up. We cannot ever, ever, ever surrender our sovereignty as individual souls um, or as a, as a race to a group of deadly gods that are so dark. We just can't do it. And I promise you, whether I have one supporter or no supporters, I will never, ever surrender my sovereignty to these bastards. I will never do it. Yeah, I know that. Oh. I know. I, I sure, I really, I'm really sure about that. You won't. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, right. uh, That's and, the way to go. and I think that there will be a lot of people that are going not to surrender the, uh, to them. Because we, uh, at least I, I can't talk about myself. That I, I know who I am. And I don't want to give my power to anyone else. There you go. There you go. Um, Carlos, after you've listened to the interview um, with Steve Quayle and Tom Horn, I would love to have your feedback. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, please, people, listen to it. Please, please listen to it. It's critical. I would not point you in that direction unless I thought it was absolutely critical and mandatory so that you could have that piece of the puzzle. I mean, we're being so distracted by what's going on in the physical world with the governments and Iran and all of that, that we're not paying attention to the spiritual piece. And this is huge. This is huge. This is how I knew the 23C date had been uh, breached. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't tell them. And when I finally was arrested by CID agents for the Internal Revenue Service, uh, I refused again to tell them. Uh, I was arrested in a hallway of an apartment building. Um, and when they put me in the car, that's all they wanted to know. Who was it that told me that? If I would tell them who that was, all of this would go away. And I kept bringing up the fact, listen guys, you know, what about the fact that you're collecting this tax illegally? Well, that just got them angrier and angrier at me. Um, so I ended up going to jail. I went to tax court. I was put in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Los Angeles, where I remained for 92 days before I was released. Okay. Um, in Los Angeles. And when I got to my floor, several people had already known that I was an ex-IRS agent. And five times I had people try to kick my ass. Now, that was nice of the IRS to do that. Several times... When they would come to get me to take me to court, they would ask me again, if you tell us who it was that breached IDRS, all this will go away. But I wasn't going to do that. 
because again, they were in the wrong. I wasn't, they were in the wrong. So I get to take Lee out of this world, out of the box information. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Catholic, if you're a Christian, if you're a Jew, if you're a uh, Muslim, prepare yourself for this information because this is really happening. Okay. And it's not, it's dark, dark, dark. It's horribly dark what's about to happen. Okay? But you have to know. You have to know what's coming down so that you can create, we can all create something different. Yeah, sure. That's the point. Okay? We, 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 we have to. We have to. And we can't. We can't. They've been hiding behind us. And now we can't let them do this anymore. Yeah, sure. So, Next thing. what else, Carlos? Next thing that I go, I want to go back over is the about the you you tell you tell something about demigods. Um, you said that uh, well that I understood is the shell government will uh, present the demigods to us, right? That is correct. Okay, those demigods are uh, are those um, are the ones uh, that ha are known by uh, as the Anunnaki and all other beings um, that came before um, to the earth. There. They're part of the group that's been here all along, controlling behind the scenes. Okay, so... They, they create this global government <laughs> and this one world currency. They will step forward because they will then have absolute control. So they think that they will have absolute, absolute control of humanity. Sure. Then... So, then that, and help represent people in front of IRS collections in Los Angeles. Okay? I was the first one to do it. Yes. And I was a tax collection consultant. And what I did... Well, I went door to door to law firms, CPA firms, uh, tax accounting firms, uh, PA firms to offer consulting, how to deal with IRS collections. Because you can't go to school for that. The only guys who know really how to do it are revenue officers, because they're the ones given the training. So what I did was, um, I started doing lectures, yeah. teaching law firms, accounting firms, how IRS collections does it. Mm -hmm. Well, they hated me. IRS, the uh, LA district, the senior management of IRS district in Los Angeles hated me for doing this because I was pulling back the veil. I was showing people, here's how you can defend yourself. Here's how they gather information. Here's how they find it. Um, here's what a revenue officer's caseload looks like. Here's what he does. Here's how he gets your attention, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they did not like me. Mm. So, um, you know, I was exposing the fear tactics and the mind control that they use. You know, you notice how between um, February and April 15th, you hear about all these big names getting busted and getting arrested. You know, they do that on purpose to scare the crap out of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's being exposed very, very quickly. Yeah. So yesterday on the, um, website called All American Gold, a friend of mine said you need to listen to these three interviews. Now you can find these on YouTube. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to look up Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, Quail, I believe it's Q-U-A-Y-L-E, February 22nd, 2012, with Tom, T-O-M, Horn, H-O-R-N. Okay. And this is a three and a half, almost four hour interview Whoa. regarding what's happening on a spiritual level, pretty much focused just around the Catholic Church. Yeah. Carlos, I was born and raised a Catholic. Yeah. Um, you know, I've researched this for a long, long time, have even was given information from my dad as a kid. Uh, about a book called The Vatican Empire, about how they owned, how they were really just a corporation, mass as a church. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also shared on the radio shows that we did with Robert Stanley, which are now gone, about the three trusts that the Catholic Church had set up, basically declaring themselves the owner of the earth, the owner of us, and... Okay. They're multidimensional. Okay. Um sure um the, the the last thing that that i want to that i want to ask you is um um i know that you have to said this before uh but what happened i i, I mean do you know what 
what the hell happened with Rob Stanley? Did you, he just uh, delete everything on his website from that has to be from you? I mean, no, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't. Bob, Bob, Bob made a decision and he just went with it. Um, and I have nothing more to say on that. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, I have nothing more to say on that. Okay. Sure. That's fine. And um, you know, um, and I and I will just say this that the books that he's written, the, the contribution he's made is very, very important. Very, very important. Um, and when you listen to the article, when you listen to the interview regarding Rome and how it also connects to Washington, D.C., that's where Bob's pieces come in. And, it, and it's critical that that not be discounted for any reason. It's critical, that piece of information that he shared. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll put the pieces together. I'm uh, sure that, that the listeners will put those pieces together. Okay, and I, I remember the interview that you are telling me. I mean, you, you... And I could revisit this, and I would be able to have it overturned. Okay. Well, that just never really happened. Um, financially, there's, it's been a struggle. Yeah, there have been a lot of years of struggle, and I've never been able to deal with it um, or get it overturned or revisit it with a really good law firm. Hopefully one day that'll change. So, yes, I do, in fact, have a felony count against me from the IRS. Mm -hmm. But now you know the situation, and my detractors or my critics are using that so that people will completely dismiss all the information that the Andromedans have passed on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make you believe me. I can't make you not believe me. But what I have told you on the life of my children is true. And that's all I can do. If you decide to throw away all the information, then so be it. That's on you. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I've not done this for profit. I have not done this for glory. Oh my God. I mean, what glory? You have no idea how difficult it's been to lose the friends that I've had, to lose the partners that I've had, to have my children think I'm, in, I'm insane, to have to deal with betrayal. I, you just have no idea. And it, it is something I would never, ever do again. So, you know, again, to tell them, uh, I was arrested in a hallway of an apartment building. Um, and when they put me in the car, that's all they wanted to know. Who was it that told me that? If I would tell them who that was, all of this would go away. And I kept bringing up the fact, listen guys, you know, what about the fact that you're collecting this tax illegally? Well, that just got them angrier and angrier at me. Um, so I ended up going to jail. I went to tax court. I was put in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Los Angeles, where I remained for 92 days before I was released. Okay. Um, in Los Angeles. And when I got to my floor, several people had already known that I was an ex-IRS agent. And five times I had people try to kick my ass. Now, that was nice of the IRS to do that. Several times, when they would come to get me, to take me to court, they would ask me again, if you tell us who it was that breached IDRS, all this will go away. But I wasn't going to do that, because again, they were in the wrong. I wasn't. They were in the wrong. So I get to tax court, and I have four or five charges leveled at me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and they were all bullshit. They were all bullshit charges. In fact, in the end, three of them were completely dismissed by the judge. Listen to this message. Okay. So what, what they are doing is just like a kind of a serpent that it, when it's going to be dead or, very, or it's going to be eaten by that by, by his predator, it it's it uh, it appears it's that playing dead. it's playing dead. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's playing dead. <sighs> so. There, you know, there are a lot of people that are thinking that the 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 world government is just uh, it's just done that the that the ETs are all of that um, beings that are coming to the air they are they are now in control. But you are telling me now that that's not true, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Now that's not to say that you know the information that's being shared is is, is misleading. I believe that you know the people talking about this 
uh, Fulford and Wilcock, they're absolutely sincere in the information they have. They're yeah. absolutely sincere in how deep it goes and, you know, the derivatives and creating um, fraudulent bonds in order to take control of the world's wealth. They're sincere about that. They absolutely are. Um, you know, and, and I want to believe them. I do. I, I don't want this to play out. I don't want this to go to the next level of, of oh my God, you know, here's the false prophet, here's the antichrist, here's these satanic dark spirits. When we, when all the events come down related to the book of Revelations, mm -hmm. and we are going to have to play it out because it's been placed into the consciousness of humanity for 1,500 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to have to play it out, and we're going to play it out. <sighs> Things are going to occur. Now, that will play this thing out. And the lesson at the end of all of this to humanity is we are creators. We create physicality with our thoughts and with our emotions. That's how powerful we are, and that's why they have been manipulating us, these regressive groups, for so long. They have been hiding within our physicality, within our creation of our physicality. They have been hiding within it, and they have been manipulating us for thousands and thousands of years so that they would have a place to hide. Yes. Well, all of this is coming to fruition, and as our energy frequency is, increases, as we approach the galactic plane, and we enter the, the plasma cloud, our, the vibration is rising so that the dimensional field in which they've been hiding is becoming exposed. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to hide anymore. But we need to know clearly the reality of the fact that we've been as friends um, have said, you know, take the high road, take the high road. Well, I have, and it just it gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm going to continue to take the high road, but um, I'm no longer going to shut up. Yeah. Uh, done with that. So before we get into any of that, and I address my critics and their past, 